Hi folks, welcome to another episode of NYC CNC. Today I want to talk about tool data. I've had my Torbach mill now for a few months and have really spent some time trying to understand how to best uh, organize the physical tools as well as the information about them. This summary worksheet here just shows um, the sort of six areas, for me at least, of tool data. The first is the actual tool characteristics. You know, is it an end mill? How many flutes does it have? Is it center cutting or is it for aluminum only? Oftentimes that some of that information is on the actual tool. Some of it's obviously physically apparent, size, number of flutes. Some of it's on the packaging. Some of it may be on um, only on a website or something uh, separate sort of piece of information. The second item is the Mach 3 tool table. For me, all I store here is a very brief description of the tool and then the offset height. But that's a very important number because that's what tells the software how um, your tool offset as you have as you have it set up in the tool holder. Number three, I'll show you in a second, is the CAM program tool table. For me, that's Sprute CAM. Um, all of these are obviously very important. This one certainly is very important, like all. Um, this would be where you have a tool library in your CAM software, which is what you're able to choose your tools from as you're programming a part. And having this organized well is key to going from a drawing to making chips in a an efficient manner. Number four is the G Wizard software that I purchased from CNC Cookbook. It's uh, a great piece of software which helps you understand chip load and tooling uh, material removal rates. It's also great if you start looking at things like uh, either trochoidal cutting or doing the type of cutting where you're taking a, f a much deeper cut with a thinner width of cut. Um, the fifth one is personal information about tooling. Perhaps related to number four, this would be things like what you have found the best recipes to be. CNC Cookbook is a great, or G Wizard is a great piece of software, but depending on your mill and your personal preferences, you'll probably change that. Um, and you know, like I said, personal data, if you want to limit a certain type of end mill to a certain type of material. And lastly, number six would be some you know, information about this specific tool. Perhaps one is worn, but it's still okay, but you want to make sure um, that you don't use it on a critical job or something of the sort. So first off, I thought I would show you in Sprout Cam. This is my tool library here, and I have um, still actually am working on this. I found this to be a little bit buggy in terms of how you enter information and store it or or change it. Um, I'll go over some details about this in a separate video, but suffice it to say, you would enter the name, the tool number which would be the number that you've assigned to the tool. Uh, I'll show you that in a minute, sort of what it, where it would sit in a tool changer if you had one. Um, the length, which is important for fixturing and, and some things, but the most important would be the, uh, the diameter. You, as a general rule, I think want to turn off radius compensation. I leave on length compensation. That's what lets Mach 3 utilize the, the tool length that you put in here. And then um, there are more complicated um, but very useful things relating to <clears throat> speeds and feeds that you can also edit. I've tried editing this file, which is a .csv file. You can edit in, note, in Notepad um, with with mixed results, but um, it's a it's so it's a great thing to have well organized. I'm sort of still figuring out how to best do that. The other piece of software I want to show you is GWizard. There's a lot of information out there on this. One thing you can do that I've not yet done is set up a tool crib, which is uh, similar to the Excel sheet I'm about to show you. Um, the reason I try to write down a lot of the information is that as great as GWizard is, it does take some time to go in and switch to, say, aluminum or to an end mill or to a spot drill and retype in all this information. So my solution for that and many other of the, the tooling data is I've created an Excel worksheet. Um, by all means, this has its limitations, and the single biggest burden of this is that you have to keep it updated. So, so far I've been disciplined to do so, and it seems worthwhile. I, I don't think I'll give in on that, but time will tell. Um, you can ignore this old column. I've got that uh, from an old tool setup. Um, but I basically have the tool number, I have a little column to mark whether it's a favorite tool. There's some tools I use a lot. 
and then description, brand, um, diameter, shank, etc., etc., etc. Um, I have comments, which are the personal information I have. Maybe it had some chip weld and I cleaned it out or something. Um, and then I have, right now I'm only storing one set of feeds and speeds for aluminum and one set of speed and speeds and feeds for steel. I'd love to have more, but I haven't figured out how to best organize that. But the reason I'd like to have more is to show different types and depths of cuts um, for finished milling or rough milling, etc. And then finally I have the source of where I bought the tool and then the price I paid. I keep the price on there just so that if I'm you know, uh, working on a job and I want to make sure I use an end mill that's either a good quality or not, that's uh, usually a good indication. So um, let me hop over to the mill and let's take a look at the physical side of this. Okay, so starting off with the obvious, here is the uh, here's my tool holding setup. It's a 3 8 inch piece of polypropylene, which I milled out on my Tormach. I had to rotate it a couple times because it is large, and it holds 60 tools. And all I did was just mill out um, 3 quarter inch, or I think they're 10 thou over, with uh, a corresponding number. I'll zoom in in a second to show you the number. And then what I do is I put, I happen to have a lot of uh, half inch by um, half inch nuts which um, are fine to put in the empty tool holes. What this helps me with is when I grab one to put it in the mill and then I go to put it back I know it's only going to be the one in the empty hole. Okay so here's a pan view. Hopefully you'll be able to see um, how I've organized it and uh, the numbering system. And so in summary, this part of it was actually pretty easy. Um, it's quite common to find photos and examples of these types of tool holders on the internet. Um, and when you have a lot of Tormach tool holders, then um, this system works. I, I am uh, grateful to have the number I have. I, w w could I use more? Sure, but frankly I've got plenty um, for any sort of type of job or plenty that are dedicated to tools I use often. However, I do have tools that I don't need put in dedicated holders and there's other information about tooling that I like to keep which so now I want to show you how I'm organizing that. First, for those of you who haven't seen my other videos, um, my mill is on the right side of my garage wall and then on the left side I've got my tool um, table mounted to the wall and then I've got a cart below it with the um, stuff I'm about to talk about as well as some additional stuff like calipers and wrenches and such. The reason I keep it on that side is because I don't uh, use a any type of enclosure um, for my mill and I don't use flood coolant either. I use a Trico misting system and so I end up getting a lot of chips thrown around and I like keeping the chips away from my tools so that's why they're over there. So here's where I have deviated a little bit from some of the examples I've seen online. On my tooling card I always keep a printout. Uh, this is 11 by 17 paper with the most recent version of my Excel file I just showed you. I put, I have the date set in the header so that it always prints out and I can roughly tell um, when the, this copy was from. And then the most important information that changes is the offset information. That's the height that's entered into the Mach 3 tool table. What I do is if it's if it's entered in there and it's not bolded, that means it's okay and confirmed. If I ever had any doubt, um, or if it's a new enter, the first time I entered it, I put a bullet in there and I always test it. The last thing I want to do is crash my mill because I fudged entering an offset number. And these numbers often change because I'll switch out tools and tool holders or I'll switch out the tool itself. Um, so that does require some discipline, but so far so good. And the last piece of this puzzle was how to maintain and store information on the tools as well as um, tools that aren't currently in tool holders as well as extra versions. And so my solution was uh, were these two boxes here. These are actually relatively inexpensive, about $10 each. They're 12 gauge shotgun shell uh, cases that I just cut the lids off of. And they hold 50, they have 50 uh, cubby holes in them which is great. My tool table above holds 60, so I don't have the last 10. Hasn't been a problem yet. And so what it is, is this: these numbers all correspond 
to the tooling information. So that's hole number one and that's tool number 50. And likewise, this is tool number one and this is tool number 50. The right hand box keeps either extra copies of tools. So this, I have a couple extra of these end mills. This would be number 40, or excuse me, number 32. Um, and it also keeps the tools that I don't have currently mounted in collets or in tool holders. And then on the left hand side, I try to keep one copy of the original packaging. That's usually helpful for reordering or grabbing information uh, about the tool. The other reason I like this is that it helps me keep all my tooling out in the open where I can see it, uh, which helps me visualize if I need to grab a different tool, what I have available. Uh, that's it for now, folks. I would love to hear comments and feedback. I know this is a, an evolving process and I'm excited to see what folks have to say. Uh, otherwise, I will see you soon. Thanks.